Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Zion Church, virtual church. This morning, we're going to do morning prayer for Sunday morning. Uh, if you have a Book of Common Prayer, you can pause this film and go get your Book of Common Prayer. If you have a hymnal, we're going to sing a few hymns, so go get your hymnal. With me this morning is Gregory Citarella, our music director. We're sitting a good six feet apart, so we're not going to give anybody germs. And here is your sanitized morning prayer. So the morning prayer service itself, we're going to use right two. You get a choice of morning prayer one or two. Uh, morning prayer right two begins on page 80. So let's take a look at it before we start. It begins with the words, Lord, open our lips. That will be me saying that. And the people come back with, and, and our, our mouths mouth shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. praise. And then we do the glory to the Father after that. Glory to the Father, etc., etc. We are not going to say Alleluia at the end because, look, except in Lent. So we won't add the Alleluia. Then if you look at the bottom of the page and then all of page 81, you'll see these verses from the Bible. For those of us who are in the confirmation class, we studied last week where to find Old Testament in our Book of Common Prayer. This week, we're concentrating on finding the New Testament in morning prayer. So if you'll see that these verses are organized by season, we have a choice. Well, actually, we don't have a choice. For Lent, it's the second quote on page 81. It gives us one thing to say. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. him. And it doesn't say which, if that's from the Old Testament or the New Testament, but it is, a, it is out of the Psalms, so that would be Old Testament. All right, we'll walk through everything as we do it, but I'm just going to give you that little bit of information, and off we go. Before we get started this morning, we're going to sing hymn number... 671. 671. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Just two verses. begin. Lord, open our lips, and our, our mouths shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. I almost said Alleluia. So we're going to be saying the Vanity in its fullness. Turn the page to 82. And you see the Vanity there in the middle of the page. It says it's Psalm 95. As luck would have it, for our Eucharist service that we were going to do this morning, we're saying Psalm 95. It's in our bulletins. But it's the entire Psalm 95. So if you have your Book of Common Prayer, we're going to go to page in the Psalter. 724. 724. Where am I? Thank you. My little tab fell out. 724 is right there. So 
So Psalm 95 begins on page 724, and it goes over to the 11th verse, which is on 725. We're going to say the little line of scripture before we start the psalm. So keep your finger on Psalm 95. We're going back to page 81. I will say the beginning to the colon, and everybody come in after the colon. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Now we switch right over to the psalm. The psalm will do, uh, I'll read to the asterisk, and you, uh, everyone else comes in after the asterisk. That's called responsively. Here we go. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness. At Meribah and on the day of, at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test. Though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And then we go back to that little verse that we started this with, which is on page 81, under Lent. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. him. So after the initial reading of that Psalm 95, we normally read the Psalms that are appointed for the day. We talked about this in the confirmation class that if you're doing the daily office, there's readings for each day. However, since this is substituting for Eucharist, we're going to uh, do things a little bit differently. So I'm gonna read some New Testament scripture that the early service gets to hear all the time, but we never say these words in uh, the right to Eucharist. So these are called the quiet words. They're only in right one of the Holy Eucharist service. And when I go see people in the uh, hospital or home visits, I read these comfortable words to them and without fail, they all know these words by heart. So every one of these verses is on page 332 in the Book of Common Prayer. It says Holy Eucharist, write one at the bottom of the page. And it starts where it says a minister may say one or more of the following sentences. First saying, hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. So you'll see that we have a quote from Matthew, another one from John, one from the letter of 1 Timothy, and one from the letter of 1 John. All of these are New Testament sayings, and they're all very much used by the Christian community. They were said a lot by the earliest Christians, and that's why they happen to be part of the service here, because they were so familiar to people. They're called the comfortable words because they make us feel comfy and cozy. So here's our first lesson, and these are what we're going to read. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now there's one more thing that I read when I go to people's homes. This is also from um, a gospel, 
and it's also in right one. So turn back in the service to page 324. And the very top of that page, this is going to be the last part of what we're reading. This is actually a quote from the Gospel according to Matthew. It's not cited, but that's where it's from. Got it? Mm -hmm. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And we can say the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So that's our first lesson. Typically when you do morning or evening prayer, you have a canticle between the readings. We're now between the readings. And the next reading is going to be from uh, the gospel that I was going to do for church today. So we're going to um, sing a hymn before I start reading this story of the Samaritan woman and Jesus. So the hymn is... 706. Hymn 706. We're just going to do the first two verses. up in the Bible. You can put this on pause uh, after I give you the verse. This is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, 
but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the Messiah, I mean, went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So, so the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you did not labor Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. So I'm going to give an interpretation of this reading that I learned in seminary. Um, the woman who wrote the book that I got this from is named Sandra Schneiders. She's a, a feminist theologian. And it, what she says about this reading uh, really uh, resonates within me and there's also some other um, Bible commentaries that agree with her so she's not the only one who thinks what I'm about to tell you so it's a little bit radical but I think it's fascinating so this story um, follows I'm going to pause the theater I'm, for a minute we have somebody coming in hold on 